Hi there, Walterners. I'm Jack, and this is DS1 Newscast. And recently, I was able to go and experience the all new Journey of Water inspired by Moana that's going to be opening very soon at Epcot. And so, today, what I want to do is I want to give you a full, honest review of the experience. But to do so, I think we have to begin by talking about expectations. As much like many of you, Going into this, my expectation was that this was going to be nothing more than just a well-themed water playground or splash pad for the little ones to enjoy. As after all, that's exactly what it looked like from a few pieces of concept art that we'd received up until this point. And look, don't get me wrong here, water playgrounds and splash pads definitely do have their place within the Disney parks, as I'm definitely going to find out in the not so distant future as I've just become a new dad, and so I'm probably going to learn an all new appreciation for an area where the little ones can go and cool off on hot summer days. But in the case of Journey of Water, it did exceed my expectations, which might be in part because those expectations were so low to begin with, but nevertheless, it was still surprisingly very good. And I can honestly say that I can easily see this being a fun way for the whole family to kill a good half an hour of their day when they visit Epcot. But now let's dive a little bit deeper. As you see, the way that I would describe this outdoor trail is it's more of an interactive water walkthrough experience. And the reason why I say that is because most of the water effects are not passive timer-based synchronized effects like what you'd find at let's say the leaping fountains over at the imagination pavilion but instead all of these water effects are completely controlled by you much in the same way that moana controls and interacts with the water in the movie and out of the many interactive water effects there were a few that stood out that i want to mention starting with these geysers that could be found at the beginning of the outdoor trail in front of Spaceship Earth that are controlled by your arm movements. And the best way that I can describe it is that this is probably the closest that any of us is ever going to get to feeling like Sorcerer Mickey in Fantasmic, being able to conduct our very own water orchestra, which was a pretty cool effect. Then there were these jumping pads towards the end of the trail which had me doing my best Tom Hanks impersonation from the movie Big as I'm jumping up and down on the spot, a geyser-like water spout leaps up into the air. Although, as you can probably see, no matter how much I tried, and I definitely did try, the harder you jump didn't equate to the geyser going higher. Then there's this kind of cluster effect where it required a group cooperation to generate this kind of wall of water, which was a pretty cool looking effect as well. And then my favorite effect out of all of them probably was also the simplest, as there's this one where you put your hand out and then the water just bubbles up to the height of your hand and kind of gives you a watery high five, much like Moana can high five the water in the movie. And look, I know all of this sounds a little bit silly to be reviewing water effects like they're some sort of groundbreaking thing. But at the risk of sounding cliche, it's the seamless way in which they've been integrated within the experience that do create that kind of magical feeling that you kind of expect from Disney. Which of course is a result of it not being immediately obvious how the effects are achieved. But now in hindsight, I can tell you the way it works. And it's through motion sensors that are very well hidden within plain sight. So well hidden, in fact, that at first I thought that these coconut egg shaped things were just housing lights and speakers. But upon closer inspection, these contain some sort of infrared or LiDAR based precision tracking motion sensor that monitor your movements very accurately and then control the water effects accordingly. Which means that the technology behind this whole thing blends into the background and you're just left with the fun interactive experience. And because of the way that the trail has been laid out, starting on high ground then descending downstream with a flow of water, it kind of builds towards a crescendo with water all around in this kind of chaotic scene that makes it feel like the water has a mind of its own. However, because this experience obviously requires you to interact with the water to bring it to life, the flip side to that is that it can seem lifeless if not many people are there. Which is where the importance of theming comes into all of this, and I've got to say that this is some top-notch theming. Which really shouldn't come as any great surprise, as after all, this is Imagineering we're talking about. And as you can see, there's some beautiful landscaping and foliage, great looking artificial rock work, the 16 foot tall Tafiti statue is a fantastic photo op, albeit the forced perspective doesn't really work as well. And then there's also many little details and Easter eggs to Moana that are scattered throughout. And in actual fact, the theming was so good that it reminded me of Pandora, the world of Avatar. 
as you can see in this side by side comparison that there is definitely a similarity. Almost as if a slice of Pandora had just been taken and dropped directly into Epcot. And that actually brings me to what I think is going to be a major problem that looms large overshadowing the opening of Journey of Water and that is the location. As despite it being an excellently themed interactive experience, it's also very thematically jarring with the distinct architecture of the surrounding area in Epcot. But if it wasn't for seeing Spaceship Earth overhead, I would have sworn that I was in a new part of Animal Kingdom instead. And ultimately, the blame for this being located inside of Epcot falls squarely on the former CEO, Bob Chapek as he was the Disney Parks chairman who greenlit this project to go into Epcot back in 2019. But Imagineering has clearly made the best of a bad decision when it comes to the location, as they very wisely centred the concept around an edutainment angle that harkens back to the days of old school Epcot, as the interactivity did evoke the edutainment exhibits that were found in the former interventions. As within Journey of Water, it teaches guests about the water cycle and the importance of water conservation. And so I can see how this does fit within Epcot if it's from a conservation perspective. But here's the thing, the problem with it being themed around conservation is that Disney has a whole park dedicated to conservation and that is Animal Kingdom. As at the narrative core of the animated movie, it's all about the importance of conservation, with Moana voyaging far and wide, all in the goal of finding a way to save her island home of Montanui from dying. And it seems that Disney tends to agree that Moana is a good fit at Animal Kingdom as after all the Moana character meet and greet is currently exclusive to Animal Kingdom and last year at D23 Expo Disney teased Blue Sky plans for a Moana themed land to be built in the location of Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama in Dino Land USA and so personally I feel that it would have made way more sense for it to be put in over there as this interactive water based outdoor exploration trail would have been great as a replacement to the Boneyard as part of a Moana themed land as Animal Kingdom is known for its outdoor exploration trails as well. Then the other reason why I feel that it would have made way more sense over Animal Kingdom is that personally for me it always feels like Animal Kingdom is at least 10 degrees hotter than every other one of the Disney parks and maybe that's just because of the humidity or the way that the foliage traps in the humidity but nevertheless it always feels hotter and so to have an area to go and cool off like Journey of Water would have been a much welcomed addition over at Animal Kingdom instead of Epcot. Then at the risk of sounding too negative, I've also got to mention one other thing, and that is the build time. As quite frankly, it's somewhat laughable that it's been over four years since this project was first announced in August of 2019. And even though some of that could be excused by the pandemic disruption, Disney did purposely take over two years to build this, all because of the artificially imposed financial constraints that they put on the Disney Parks capital expenditure, despite the division being a major revenue generator for the business. But what makes the build time even worse is when you consider that Disney managed to build all of Epcot in only three years, from 1979 to 1982. And although those criticisms are perfectly justified when talking about the wrong location or the ridiculously long construction time, the fact of the matter is now it's been built, and no amount of complaining is going to change any of that. And so to wrap all of this up, I think a lot of people are going to go into this with preformed judgments of what this experience is going to be, only to be very pleasantly surprised with the level of theming and the amount of fun they have with the interactivity elements of the entire experience. And at the end of the day, the only measure of success that really matters here is whether people enjoy it. And I definitely foresee this being a very popular offering at Epcot for quite some time. But now it's over to you Walton as I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions? Do you agree or disagree with me on Journey of Water? And also what do you think of the overall Epcot transformation now it's coming to a close? And what would you have wanted to see them do differently when it comes to the Epcot transformation? And that's it for today. So be sure to subscribe down below, hit that notification bell and check out the rest of the videos on this channel. And I also want to give a massive shout out and a thank you to all the Waltoneers over on the official Waltoneer fan club on Patreon who help support this channel and also the gold member Waltoneers that you can see right here now. And with all of that being said, I've been Jack, you've been you and I'll see you real soon.